So the most important development that we've been talking about this week here in Abu Dhabi is the Diwa deal, right? The Dubai um, electricity and water deal, 200 megawatts, 5.8 cents per kilowatt hour, 5.8 cents. That is the new world record. Uh, that's been done by uh, a project developer called Aqua. It's a Saudi-backed business. CEO is Paddy Padmanathan, and I joke, and I say, Paddy, you are now the Usain Bolt of the photo photovoltaic sector, because you've got, you are the world record holder. And what does he say? Or does he just uh, he smile? Laughs. He laughs. No, He's got a big the smile. Important, the important point is, the Dewa deal, 5.8 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the new world record, um, and natural and gas there is nine cents a kilowatt hour. And natural hour. gas is, is exactly is nice. So this is absolutely, um, this is the cheapest electricity you can do in the region. Um, but what's also really important is he's making money, right? Because I was on a lot of panels with him this week and uh, he was actually accused of... There was one where uh, exactly, sky, of, of, sky power or sky, uh, exactly. there was, sky um, solar? Kerry, I, don't, I wasn't there, but our, right. our the sky, the sky, the CEO of Sky Power challenged him and said, how can you do that? We need real returns and so on. And Paddy put on them very calmly. He went through and he explained how he could uh, hit really? that price point. Yeah. And uh, he claims double digit uh, equity returns. Now, wow. he says it's about pushing down the cost of CapEx through negotiations, low cost solar. It's also about pushing down the cost of finance. He's got 86% debt in that deal. Yeah. Right, so by doing that sort of leverage, you can push down your cost of capital. So he's able to offer 5.8 cents. I sincerely hope he does make money because that is the new benchmark around the world. This and is the shot. This this project is the shot that will be hurled around the world. Did six cents solar. Six cents solar. Yeah. Did they just win another contract in Northern Africa, or was he, it? He's got. I believe he's got 25 gigawatts uh, of power, of which five gigawatts is wind and solar and a few other things. So he's got a number of other projects. And for you me, need to in, you need to in, yeah, you need we, to track we, we do, we do. Well, yeah. One of the most interesting things about that story for me also is that the, the second lowest bid would have been the world record lowest. That's right. So it, That's was, right. it wasn't just the his company that was bidding really yeah. low. Yeah. Uh, they were just yeah. the lowest. But. That's right. The underbidder was bidding somewhere around seven cents, I believe. Um, and you know, it, the question is, you know, could you replicate that? Where else could you do? But you know what? Six cents, seven cents, five cents, you know, 5.8. That's not the issue. The point is, it's very, very difficult now. And the amount of publicity that deal is going to get, it's going to be very hard for anybody to argue that there shouldn't be some solar in the mix in any sunny country. And that's important because even recently, I've talked to African energy ministers who said, don't talk to me about solar, it's expensive. And they pull out a report showing solar at 35 cents per kilowatt hour. <laughs> And I said, well, what, why, do you, why do you come with these numbers from, from 2009, 2010? And they, and they don't, but they don't believe these costs. And I think with the projects coming through now, it's impossible to, you know, not to believe. Yeah, one of my favorite articles I ever wrote was uh, solar power is two to 100 times cheaper than you, than you think. Because <laughs> people have a price stuck in their head from either 2000 or 2005 or 2009. And the, drop, the cost has dropped so far. And let me ask you, we're, I mean, the cost is just going to keep going down, right? I mean, uh, and yeah, yeah. It's, it's a technology. Uh, so where do you think, where do you see this going in the next three to five to ten years with uh, solar costs? The, so the solar technology, so solar is a technology. It'll go down an experience curve. Every time the industry doubles in size, the costs of the technology piece, the panels, will go down by 20%, 22%, whatever the experience curve has been. But what's really important is um, that will slow down as the industry matures. But the situation we're in right now is the other costs, the cost of project development, the cost of installation, the cost of insurance, the costs of, uh, of getting all your permits, there's all sorts of soft costs. They are very, very different around the world. The places that have done a lot and, and know and understand and feel comfortable with solar, they're cheap. Elsewhere, very expensive. So although the technology will keep coming down, we may see a 20% drop in, in you know, uh, two, three, four years. It's that sort of order of magnitude. But the soft costs will come down much more quickly. Rooftop solar in the US, they're paying twice as much as rooftop solar in Germany. Tell me one other technology product in the US where Americans are paying 100% premium over Europeans. Tell me one other product, not cars, not TVs, not white goods, none. Now we go, right. to, we go to the US to buy technology, it's, it's, it's cheaper. Exactly, so you know, this, 
price differential on solar is going to get crushed everywhere around the world. And uh, I mean, I, I, we've written about that a lot, that story that we've, tra we've tried to dig into the, uh, the research, the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory research that has tried to pick apart why solar is twice as expensive in the U.S. And um, there, can you speak a little bit about what are some of those? I mean, there's the permitting. That's a complicated yep. issue in the U.S. Financing, yep. customer acquisition. Yep. I mean, a lot of it seems like it's solved by market maturity. As you get the yep. more mature market, you have these. But there's some of it, I think, maybe not with the financing yep. or the, I mean, with the customer acquisition. Yep. The fi financing. Right. So there's a number of factors, a number of reasons why solar rooftops cost more in America than in Germany. It's clearly not the technology, although, of course, you do have some uh, anti-dumping tariffs, which are not helpful whatsoever. Um, but Fox News says it's the solar resources. Oh yes, because it, uh, Germany has it's, better it's, solar resources. That's right. According to Fox News, it'll be those those deserts in Germany, which are just so perfect for solar compared to uh, America. But um, no, it's it's a combination of things. Um, it is scale and just the experience curve of, of those you know softer areas that is that is later to start in the U.S. It's financing costs. In some cases, the German costs are low because KfW, the so the National Development Bank, will help you with very low cost debt, which helps. Um, it's also multi-stage permitting processes. How many people do you need to talk to and how many little forms and how many stamps do you need in the US versus the single form quick process in Germany. But you know, fundamentally, fundamentally, it's about competition. If there was real tough competition between installers at scale in the US, you'd see those costs pushed down. Everything, everything would yield to uh, scale and competition, and it will. And on the utility scale side, we've seen seven, eight cents a kilowatt hour in yep. South America, North America, Asia. Where, when do you see? When do you think we're going to be hitting six cents a kilowatt hour in some of these other regions? Take whatever answer I give you, and halve it. Yeah. We just it, it just goes faster yeah. because the moment it, it, it's it is a bit like the four minute mile. Right? Nobody thought you could run a four minute mile, mm. and then Roger Bannister, Great Britain, um, set out to run the four-minute mile. Do you know, within a few years, how many people had run the four-minute mile? I don't know the answer to that, but it was more than half a dozen. Jeez. It was the psychological barrier of saying, this can be done. So around the world, I'll tell you, Brazilians, Americans, Chileans, Indians are looking at six cents per kilowatt hour and going, how do we now reverse engineer and get to that price point? And, and they one, will get there quicker than they think. One of our favorite topics is the disruptive nature of solar and electric vehicles and storage. Um, uh, we've seen it in so many industries. Cassette tapes came and killed, uh, <laughs> killed vinyl. Yeah. We had uh, CDs come and kill cassettes. Uh, the, I think the phrase that captures that best is the Kodak moment for me, because Kodak had its yeah. Kodak moment and got wiped out because it didn't see digital cameras killing its business. It didn't move quickly enough. Well, do you think, I mean, you've already talked about this, but do you think this is just one of those stories again where the incumbent industries are too slow to, to realize that this is changing very fast? Or? I, I love the concept of a Kodak moment, and actually, particularly because I did some work in the, uh, in the imaging and film space. You're a renaissance um, man. <laughs> back in the 90s, as a, when I was with McKinsey as a consultant. Mm -hmm. um, and what was interesting was that that industry saw what was coming. It actually saw what was coming, but it just couldn't dodge. It, and, and what happens with these but things it, is they go slow. But did it just it, see it, it too late? No, 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 no. These it's are very some, smart people. They saw yeah. it. They saw it, and they expected it to be a. They expected it to be a linear transition. Yeah. You know, the digital would do this, and then the next year it would do this, and the next year it what actually happens is it does nothing. It does nothing, 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 and then suddenly, boom, phase change. And I think that's the Kodak moment. Is the is the phase change? But actually. People can see it in advance. And what's really interesting, I'll give you, uh, see if you can map it across. 2007, I went to California and I hosted a lunch for what was then New Energy Finance. And I thought there were a bunch of uh, investors, tech companies, utilities in the room. And I said, what is your plan at the moment as utilities? You've got this lovely, lush, high electricity price at midday because everybody's got their air conditioning on. That's where you make all your money. What is your plan for when the daytime electricity retail price goes to effectively zero because of photovoltaics. And you're gonna to have to push the prices up on the shoulders and at night, because otherwise you're kind of out of business. And they looked at me like I was completely mad. Yeah. 
And I, and I, I questioned Wait, what year was this? 2007. Yeah, 2007. that's 2007. so early I, to have that, uh, well, uh, that insight. But, but I, I, wasn't, I, I would think I wasn't the only person talking about death spiral back then, but of course now everybody talks about it. Yeah. Um, and and, and now it's too late it. for a lot you know, of... Well, is it too late? I mean, well, yeah, you can transition, you can... So they have, they have essentially, I think, two options. Acquire. One is to reinvent what they're doing up at the retail end. So to, to understand the services that their consumers really need, which is not bulk kilowatts at any time of the day or night, reinvent themselves, provide services, um, almost turn themselves into telcos, or at least that piece of it, and probably divest as fast as, and as hard as they can from the generating side of things. That's strategy number one, which I would say is uh, a progressive, attractive uh, strategy for you know, for, for recruiting, you know, smart new graduates and those sorts of things. Strategy number two is, is regulatory capture. Let's slow everything down. Wait a minute, folks, the lights will go out. And, you know, if you think about the anthropology of management teams in a lot of these companies, you know, they only have to last, if they've reached the top of those companies, they only have to get through another five or seven years and, and they're home free. And so that latter strategy, the regulatory capture strategy, looks pretty attractive. And, um, and so I think that it's up to investors, it's up to the boards, and it's up to the progressives in the companies and around them to say, no, we don't, we, you know, we, we will be kodak if we do that. Those executives might be able to last long enough. We'll have our Kodak but moment. We will have our, we, we, the next generation of management, we, the investors, will get Kodak, we'll have our Kodak moment if we do that.